sense him. He's strong. Stronger than anyone I've ever fought. Baba Bowie. I know this video is really old and outdated. They made two more of these after all, but as someone who has a PhD in the Toyverse, I can't just sit here and let my boy GT Goku get disrespected like this. The amount of absolute bullshit that goes on in this video genuinely makes me like angry. Like not not physically, obviously, but like a little miffed that they decided to put so many sources in the beginning of the video, and then by the end of the video, it's pretty clear that whoever was giving them this information clearly didn't give a shit so here's someone that does give a shit here to actually give you something worthwhile now i'm not saying that goku beats superman that's not the point of this video i just want to point out all the inaccuracies that they got with goku in the interest of fairness i won't use any material that was released after this video's release so battle gods resurrection f etc all of that i will be leaving out of this video completely even though you can technically tie it to the gt continuity <laughs> The first thing this video doesn't understand is what a continuity is. Though the original writings hold precedence, no mistranslations allowed. Okay, so the manga. We're just going to use the manga for this, right? Except they use GT and stuff from the movies in this, which wasn't in the original manga. Though the original writings hold precedence. And yeah, I know they just said. To ensure no questions are left unanswered, we will be acknowledging every official resource for both combatants. Except that's not how that works. You wouldn't give Dragon Ball Super Goku Super Saiyan 4 just because GT was officially released. I know what they're doing. They're trying to use a comp Goku. They're trying to use the manga with GT tacked on plus the movies so that everyone's happy. Except no, that's not how that would work. But whatever, continuity is for nerds, and that's hardly the worst thing this video does. But it doesn't even matter because power levels are absurd. The entire point of introducing them was to show how unreliable and meaningless they were. Now, I admit, I've also been a part of the power levels are bullshit crowd. But aside from when the Z fighters lower or suppress their power levels to hide how strong they actually are or to avoid being detected, a power level reading is actually incredibly accurate in terms of how strong someone is. The only reason they're unreliable is because characters like Goku and Ko, they can suppress their power levels. They can make themselves appear weaker than they actually are, which throws off an opponent. So comparing Goku's power levels to other characters' power levels is actually an incredibly accurate way to gauge what Goku is capable of when he's at his max. This is different from when Goku is suppressing his power level on purpose. Th those are two different scenarios. We cannot judge Goku by his power level, nor can we through power scaling, the theory that he can achieve the same feats as lesser Dragon Ball characters. Except we can. Do I need to prove this is wrong? Like, can we all just agree that this is pretty stupid? Am I the only one who thinks that? Obviously, Goku can't switch bodies like Captain Ginyu can or regenerate like Majin Buu can. Just because he's stronger than them, that doesn't mean he gets those abilities automatically, if that's what they're trying to say. We've been going on for like three minutes, and we're not even at the part that I actually take issue with. Damn! Okay, but actually, I'm gonna get to the parts of the video that I actually take issue with, like, actually. The first major problem with this video is with the Super Saiyan multipliers that they used. For Super Saiyan 1, 2, and 3, they got them from the Super Exciting Guide, which, fair enough, you know, that's a pretty definitive source, that's the numbers you see online all the time. That's not what I have an issue with. What I have an issue with is the Super Saiyan 4 multiplier they used. I cannot find this number anywhere. I've looked literally across the entire internet, and I cannot find a single source backing up that Super Saiyan 4 is 10 times Super Saiyan 3. There is a video game that says that Super Saiyan 4 is 10 times Super Saiyan, but not Super Saiyan 3, and obviously that's just wrong if you watch GT. In fact, according to the GT Perfect Files, Super Saiyan 4 doesn't have a set multiplier, described as the form that draws out the battle power of the Saiyan to the utmost limit. So it works more closely to Gohan's ultimate form. I wish I could say this is the only time Death Battle just made shit up, but it's not. We will see this multiple times throughout the video. Not only does Dragon Ball heavily abuse cinematic time, but Goku's final adventures in Dragon Ball GT are incredibly inconsistent due to his untimely transformation into a child. Wow, the room got a lot bigger somehow. As Ki is dependent on the physical body, his child form likely could not handle his own Ki, sending his power into flux. It can't take it! 
It's too weak. My older body was more developed. To be fair, I don't blame Death Battle for thinking this. After all, this is a myth that a lot of people still think, even to this day. But the GT Perfect Files proves this wrong pretty much instantly. Goku didn't get any weaker. His stamina just got nerfed. The stamina issue was later fixed when he got his tail back. He was able to use Super Saiyan 3 for much longer. After experimenting with dozens of different theories, we discovered an ironclad method to finding Goku's limits, which we call the gravity formula. A two-pack of ass! Stupid-ass gravity formula. Fuck the gravity formula. All my homies hate the gravity formula. The biggest problem with the gravity formula is that it's just wrong. Like, Goku has multiple feats that counteract pretty much every point in the gravity formula. This is worthless. It's less than worthless, my boy! Goku has feats that outpace pretty much every category of the gravity formula, and so let's just run through all of those one by one. Multiplying the 40 tons by the Super Saiyan forms means he can lift up to 160,000 tons in Super Saiyan 4. Now hold on a minute, I think you're missing a part of your stupid ass gravity formula. If they actually were consistent with their methods, this is what the numbers would look like, actually. Not that it matters, because these numbers are completely irrelevant. Goku's pure muscle lifting feat have never actually been that good, admittingly, but if you look at Dragon Ball GT, he lifts half of a city. Do you know how much a city weighs? This much, I don't, I, I, I don't know. He flew across Snakeway Road as fast as possible to save his friends. This is something that will become more apparent as we go on, but they keep using outdated feats for Goku instead of what's actually present in the series. To see how fast his base form is by the end of the series, we run the Snakeway number through the gravity formula to find that his top speed clocks in at over two and a half billion kilometers per hour, over two times the speed of light. Now, hold on just a minute there. What in the Kentucky Fried Fuck is that? You understand that the Super Saiyan multipliers multiply your stats. Why is Super Saiyan half of base form? Once again, here are the numbers if Death Battle was actually trying at all. Meaning Goku would actually be over 238 times the speed of light, which obliterates Superman's speed calc in this, by the way, but whatever. Not that any of these numbers mean anything anyway, because Goku has immeasurable speed based on the Return of Cooler film. In the Return of Cooler film, Goku and Metacooler fight in the transitional realm of instant transmission. In guidebooks, this is described as a space that transcends time. This is an immeasurable speed feat, and you can't even say that it's not canon to GT because we see Cooler in Dragon Ball GT, which means his movies are canon to the GT anime. Plus, as stated earlier, they're using a comp Goku, so this feat would apply regardless. We can determine Goku's durability through this bomb. Stop the cap. <laughs> To be fair, I don't have much in the way of Dragon Ball durability feats. Like, they just punch each other, and then either they die or they don't. Like, it doesn't really matter. I do know that using a feat from the Cell Saga, as opposed to a feat from, like, the Shadow Dragon Saga, that's not how that works. Oh, but my numbers, I need, I need a, I need a, I need a number. How about you number the, some bitches? Goku doesn't rely solely on his physical abilities. He amplifies his strength and durability with Ki. But even though his Ki reserve cannot be measured, we can determine his maximum amount. Output. See, his key attacks do not force him backward unless he allows them to. Even when firing upward at full power, the ground beneath him remains untouched. Therefore, according to physics, his maximum output is, at most, equal to the amount of force he can withstand. Luckily, we just calculated that with a Jiroba! Pretty slick death battle, I must admit. However, you forgot the part where Goku blew up an entire dimension. In Dragon Ball GT, Goku destroys Suguroku space, which is described as an area between dimensions and an area without space and time. He destroys this in base form with a single Kamehameha. Goku destroys an entire dimension that is without the concepts of space and time. You, you can't measure that. That is a significantly higher dimensional feat, and that's not even the worst of it. Otherworld is confirmed to be a higher dimension, which Goku shook in Super Saiyan 3 during the Fusion Reborn film. Garlic Jr. is able to create the Dead Zone, which is described as a hyperspace, which a hyperspace is described as a space of four or more dimensions. Dragon Ball has multiple higher dimensional feats in the anime continuity that Death Battle is pulling from and they, ig they ignored all of it. Now we can keep throwing feats and equations around, but in the end, numbers cannot measure what Goku and Superman are capable of. The only accurate thing said in this video. The difference is at the core of their character. Goku has never been invincible. He has very clear limits and must overcome those limits to solve the problems at hand. That's the whole point. So, what happens when you pit a man with the power to break any limits against another who has no limits in the first place? Well, only one has limits to give at all. 
that's actually a really beautiful sentiment to end this video on. Wow, if only I'd thought of that sooner. We already know the spell of it.